Hey guys, 420 scene here. Hope everyone's having a super stony day. Let me know what you're talking on and where you're watching the video from. I always like to know. Drop a like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret, unlisted, grow and smoke videos, check us out on Patreon. I'm gonna have the link in the upper right hand corner over here. So who else thinks winter is complete and utter trash? We literally lost power like five times in maybe 10 minutes. It's windy, my garbage can is probably, I mean, that's probably way down the road. I might not even have a garbage can anymore. Everything is iced out. Power lines might not be intact. The snow probably... I think it's hiding the Mustang. There's no Mustang out there. There's a whole bunch of snow out there. I can't leave the house, and I mean, even if I did, I gotta figure out where to dig out that Mustang. I mean, it's like the shining up in here, high key. The only good thing about winter is knowing how trash it is outside, and you just inside, nice and warm, with some lo-fi. Got that lo-fi playing in the background for you guys. Smoke sesh and just straight good vibes. Today we're gonna be talking about doing a grow in the winter because, I mean, it's winter. You guys are probably probably trying to grow. Why not? Mother Nature is always around us, obviously, but old man winter, he's here. Right here, right now. So I think it's time for me to give you guys some tips if you're planning on doing a run this winter, or heck, if you're already doing a run this winter, and maybe you're having some issues because of the cold weather and you might not even think about it. If you haven't figured this out yet, yeah, this is gonna be another tips video, but this time for the winter. The first tip that I can give you guys, and it's a mistake that I also learned from, is that if you're running seedlings in a germination kit, make sure to leave them in there for at least two to three weeks, depending on how fast they grow, because if you take them out early and your environment is not completely dialed in, you could run into some problems over here, you know what I mean? Especially if you live in an area with like super low humidity. I can honestly say that, you know what, I made that mistake and it took a little while for my ladies to bounce back, but you know what, they did. The reason I transplanted earlier than I normally would is because when I went to the shop, they had some smaller coconut husk containers, a lot smaller. I usually get the six inch ones, but the only thing they had was the three and a half inch ones, so I mean, heck, I just got it. Now, the problem with that is I didn't want to just let the roots grow out, like if I left it in there for like two, three weeks or so, probably about three weeks, and just kind of, you know, I don't want the roots to just kind of hang there, so I did transplant early, but my humidity is complete trash, so always have a plan before transplanting, and it's especially a bigger problem in the winter because I don't know where you guys live. Let me know in the comments where you guys live. I'll always like to know. But where I'm at, it always seems like the humidity is always a lot lower in the winter. I'm talking like 20% kind of low. Usually like in the summertime, my humidity is 35%. Still garbage though, right? Some of you don't know this, but all you VIPs on Patreon that are watching my exclusive grow content know I'm also starting some Sweet Insanity and Mandarin Cookies V2 by Ethos and Runs Punch by Herbie's along with the Apple Betty that's already in the closet, but most of you guys have been following already know about the Apple Betty grow. I just wanted to point that out so someone's like, oh, well, what happened to your Apple Betty, bro? Well, I got it in there, bro. The second tip that I want to give you guys is to make sure that your soil is warm, especially when you're starting out. If you're in environment is good. Let's just say you got your environment dialed in. I'm talking, you know, you're like 70, 70, you know, you're keeping your temperatures in the 70s. Your humidity is like 50, 55%. Everything is all good, but your soil is cold. I'm telling you right now, you're still going to be running into some issues and it will slow down your growth. I was actually talking to one of my Discord members, Von Douche. He's really good at this. He's a commercial... He was saying how it's been a tough winter for all of us, especially up here in the Northeast. And we both figured out one problem. We both had the same problem. You know, we were kind of just collaborating thoughts on voice chat. If you guys aren't on Discord, definitely check us out. I do go on voice chat some nights. Me and Von Douche, we had some problems with our ladies, our young ladies in the winter. We figured out that the soil was like really cold. I mean, not really cold, but cold enough for them. So what I did was, I don't know what Von Douche did. I think he picked up some heat mats, but I picked up some heat mats, so like $20 a pop. And I mean, most of you guys are probably running like two to five ladies. I'm talking to you guys that are just trying to grow for personal. Obviously, you commercial guys are not gonna be spending $20 a pop just for, just to keep your soil warm. I mean, that would, that run, that'd be expensive, right? But I mean, most of you guys, you guys are running what? Maybe two ladies, six ladies tops, maybe eight ladies tops. A heat mat would be a really good investment, if, especially if your soil is cold and you're just, 
you know, the growth is just, it's just not as strong. It's not as vigorous as you'd like it to be. Cause I know there's gonna be somebody out there that's like, well, what's going on here? My environmental conditions are good. I got really good genetics. What's going on here? Why am I having these issues? I can tell you right now that the biggest problem that you most likely have, especially if your environmental conditions are dialed in, is probably the temperature of your soil. So make sure to get on that guys. Something else you wanna look into are genetics, you know, that you're gonna be running in the winter. I know that I talk about genetics a lot, but I mean, it definitely does play a role, especially when it comes to picking the right genetics that are complementary to the environment that you're gonna be running in. And me personally, I've always, <laughs> I always mentioned this in so many videos. There's no secret that I love indica doms. Like, I'm just not a fan of sativa personally. But like I was saying, I've always felt like indica doms handle the cold weather a heck of a lot better than sativa doms. It's also a lot harder to get mold, so I don't know, it's kind of a win-win, and that's something really important because mold really sucks, especially in the winter. And if you have a lot of moisture in the air, mold is probably one of the scariest things that can happen to anyone's grow, especially in the winter. See, everybody thinks that mold happens when it's just hot weather, but like, I'm telling you, it's just as bad, if not worse, when it's cold out. I've had people ask me, how cold is too cold for them? And I still remember reading this in the famous Jorge Cervantes Grow Bible. Now, once it's at 55 degrees, growth just, I mean, it just straight dead ass stops. So try to keep it over 60 degrees if you can help it. And yes, that book is key to everything I've learned so far, as far as horticulture is concerned. So definitely check it out if you want. Not trying to promote any books. We all know there's too much of that going around. Now back to what we were talking about with, you know, the genetics and using indica doms during the winter time. If you're strictly about sativas though, I mean, bruh, you're out of luck. I don't know what to tell you. The next tip I'm going to give you guys when it comes to running in cold weather and guys, all right, I'm not crazy about this option, but it is an option out there. And depending on your situation, maybe setting up a greenhouse could be the best thing. And the reason I'm not really a fan of this is because if there are prying eyes that wanna steal your shit, well, obviously, they're gonna steal your shit. Plus greenhouses can be really pricey unless you get one of those cheap ones on Amazon, which I don't really know too many people that have used the greenhouses on Amazon, but I know the really cheap ones were a problem for a few people that I remember talking to last year, I think, I don't think I had, no, I didn't have Discord yet at this point. But I do remember my one boy out in California, he had a greenhouse and it kept falling apart. I mean, it took him a long time to get it set up. I think it was like a two day project because he messed it up, the instructions were terrible and it was, it was just not a good time. Like I said, it's not a popular option. I don't see too many people on Patreon or Discord asking about setting up a greenhouse, but I still wanted to at least mention it in the video because even though I'm not crazy about the greenhouse option, it's still there. It could be a little challenging running in the winter, but if you can get your ladies into the flowering stage, it's pretty much gonna be smooth sailing from there on out. I feel like when you're trying to grow and you're in the flowering stage, it's like, the conditions are just perfect. I'm not gonna say they're perfect, but they're close. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, if you have mold issues, that's not a good thing. But what I'm trying to say is when you have colder conditions and lower humidity, when you're in the flowering stage, I mean, it's a good thing. Honestly, it's mostly the seedling stage and just getting your environment dialed in during the early stages of growth and just trying to avoid mold at all costs. See, those are the biggest problems. If you can get those two things taken care of, I don't see any problems with people getting some killer results this winter. Now that we're towards the end of the video, I'm not gonna end it just yet. It's that time again. You're probably wondering, what do you mean it's that time again? Who's ready for a stoner tip of the day? This time it's gonna be a 1 a.m. and not a 6 a.m. Just the most random shit that I think about when I'm super faded. So here it is. Wishing that bongs had a hit counter so you could not only see how many hits you took out of your piece and so you can divide and calculate just how much each hit costs and how much your bong is worth and have a hit count number just to justify your glass investment. Because I mean, how cool would it be to legit have a hit counter? Like, like, am I the only one that thought about this? I wanna know what your guys' thoughts are about this, or you know, just drop your stoner thoughts of the day. I'm sure everybody's got something that they randomly think about when they're super blazed. Like, I know when I'm super faded, I'm just trying to think of like really random stuff, but I would get like really deep into it though. Think about it though, right? If I paid $500 for a roar, I, I know roars go for like four to $600, but if I pay $500, I kinda wanna see that I hit it like a million times to justify my purchase, kinda like those 
mods. I thought that was pretty funny. Let me know what you thought about the stoner tip of the day. Drop your comments below. I want to get a million likes in here, two million comments, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So before we close off today's video, if you want to check out our exclusive grow videos, be sure to join us on Patreon and get that VIP swag. So having said that, while we're on the subject, I do want to thank everyone that's been showing us support on Patreon for the last two years. It's really been helping us out a lot since YouTube ads are like complete trash this year. So I'm going to close off today's video, but before I do, be sure to smash that thumbs up, smash that like button, subscribe for more content, turn on your post notification bell. I hope everybody has a great rest of the day and until next time, stay safe. Peace.